Hi everybody, Eric Joseph Lewis here and today I'll be teaching you how to differentiate between the very common wild edible imported from Europe, uh, Anthriscus sylvestris, also known as wild chervil, and the very poisonous poison hemlock, Conium maculatum. So let's dive into the woods and take a look. So let's take a look at what we've got going on here because um, these two plants poison hemlock, uh, conium maculatum, and wild chervil, Anthriscus sylvestris, they can be pretty tough to differentiate between, especially for beginner foragers, and I want to make sure that everyone knows how to tell them apart so that nobody gets themselves hurt, and personally I would recommend just avoiding tricky carrot family members like wild chervil, and, uh, you know, focus on much easier, more gentle, beginner-friendly kind of plants like, uh, you know, like, say, this little garlic mustard right here. And, you know, that one's very easy and very abundant and very friendly. But let's dive in and see what we got going on here. So here we have the very poisonous poison hemlock. Conium maculatum, and um, there's a few things that I want to point out. The first feature I want to draw everyone's attention to is the very pronounced purple splotches all over the stem, and uh, this is very common on poison hemlock. I've seen it on every plant um, that I've looked at. I won't say that it's universal because it may very well not be. And I don't like using coloration or kind of subjective terms like splotches. Uh, now I'm being a little bit careful not to touch it because I hear that even touching the oils can give you some pretty intense photosensitivity and then sun exposure can be a problem. But the next thing that I want to point out is that these leaves are highly compounded. So down here is the leaf sheath and that is where the node is. And so everything above the node is the leaf. And we can see that this leaf is very compounded. So we've got one leaflet there that's then compounded further into more leaflets. Then we've got another pair of leaflets, another pair of leaflets, another pair of leaflets, and then each of these uh, leaflets has more leaflets. So it's an exceptionally compounded leaf. So the next thing I'll point out is that there are no hairs on the leaf sheath which is very important and you can see in this nice close-up there are no hairs, no fuzziness. And I'll also point out that right now um, we are in uh, late April. Um, May is just around the corner and uh, less than a week away. And you'll notice that there are no flowers on this poison hemlock, Conium maculatum. Now, right next door, so that's another important thing to note is that this wild chervil, the Anthriscus sylvestris, uh, can be growing right next door to the poison hemlock. And we'll notice for the very first thing is that the wild chervil is beginning to go to flower. The other thing to note starting with the last of the features from the poison hemlock and working our way backwards. So first, poison hemlock, not flowering at all. Wild chervil beginning to flower in uh, late April, early May. So wild chervil flowers much more early. Let's take a look at this leaf sheath and you notice little bits of fuzz. Let's take a look at the leaf structure far less compounded and purple lines rather than splotches on the wild chervil. So those are the key identification features to distinguish between these two.
Now, in the interest of full disclosure, I will say that uh, wild chervil is not one that I have actually consumed. And um, that's mainly because I'm a big baby and I like to take my sweet time with things. Plus, I know that um, a lot of the carrot family members can lead to intense photosensitivity and they do have some more intense kind of chemistry to them. Even though I am very confident in my identification of wild chervil, it's one that I've still chosen not to consume up to this point. And I might give it a try later this season just to see what it's like and um, get a little more familiar with it. But I'll be doing a lot more research on this one before I actually dive into consuming it. It's one of these herbs that I see a lot of and um, being that it's so common, I would like to develop a deeper relationship with this friend and get to know them a little more intimately. But with all of the wild edibles that are so prolific and so easy to identify and so delicious and so nutritious and have no cautionary tales behind them, I tend to lean more towards focusing on those kind of super gentle, uh, super abundant and super sweet wild edibles. This one has kind of fallen by the wayside for me a little bit over the last few years, but I might change that this year. We'll see. Anyway, I wanted to make sure that everybody following this YouTube channel and just anybody who sees this video is at least very confident in their identification of this plant and in being able to differentiate between this and poison water hemlock because a lot of people hesitate to get into foraging simply because they're worried about misidentifying a plant and accidentally poisoning themselves, which is fair. And um, it's definitely a reason that I proceed with a lot of caution on many different plants. That being said, there's not many plants in North America that are really deadly poisonous, like water hemlock and poison hemlock and veratrum viridis and monk's hood. Um, so once we get to know kind of the, the top deadly poisons in our area, we can at least know that if we make a misidentification error and eat the wrong plant, we'll live to forage another day. So I hope that you're feeling empowered through this video. And if you enjoyed it, be sure to give it a like and uh, hit the subscribe button and the bell notification so that you can see more videos like this. I'll see you further down the green path. Keep on being the love, family. Peace.